but starting positions in Total War Warhammer 3, Omens of Destruction DLC. Now before I talk about Skulltaker, Gorbat, and Maneater, let's talk about Warzag and Arbol. Because we know, based on the footage that Creative Assembly showed us in one of their discussion videos, that Warzag is going to be moved from his current, star uh, current starting position over here in Ekrund, he's gonna be moved all the way down here in this particular area. Now, we don't know if they're gonna make any changes towards and I think some faction changes are in order, but if they do even a quarter of what they did for Gelt or Karl Franz, I don't suspect Warzag would have a significant issue with this starting position. And point of fact, even if he stayed as he is, he wouldn't necessarily struggle with that. Green skins are really powerful. I guess it remains to be seen what Creative Assembly is going to change with regards to green skins, because they did talk about racial updates and all that, but we don't know exactly how that's going to be. And the footage they've shown doesn't give us any indication. Now, jungle warfare in general is terrible, but the green skins do have the underway. And just being able to outmaneuver your enemies, let alone the fact that green skins can maintain more armies than pretty much everyone else except Skaven and to some extent vampire counts, and you have higher quality armies than vampire counts, means that even against the legendary AI, you'll be running in circles around them. I imagine it's going to be a really bad day to try and play a campaign as either Tic Tac Toe or Krokgar after Warzag is moved over here. Lizardmen and Greenskins just don't get along, and oof, poor Teclas, he's gonna suffer quite badly. I mean, his campaign is already pure misery. Imagine sharing a border with Warzang now all of a sudden. The biggest challenge you might encounter when you're playing a Warzang campaign, beyond the vampire bullshit, uh, and vampire bullshit because vampires can maintain a lot of stacks, especially on legendary difficulty these days. The biggest challenge, though, I would suspect would come from Fork, because Fork has some fairly nasty buffs to, that he gives to his armies. However, you might be able to take advantage of the fact that the way Fork moves his troops, his armies, under AI control, he'll always move north. So you might be able to take care of Zorn, eliminate a lot of his recruitment, economy, and the AI still needs money and recruitment capability in order to be able to overwhelm you. So I think Warzak's campaign, unless they make no other changes to Lizardmen or anything else in this location, but I think Warzak's campaign is going to be a breeze by the looks of it. And that's if they keep him as is, and I imagine they're gonna make some changes, faction effects, you know, buffs to Savage Orcs, that kind of stuff. Okay, what about Arbol? Well, we just don't know. We have no indication of where he might start. At least, I haven't seen anything. He might be in Nagrond. Basically, there was a corn invasion, like Valka is supposed to represent this. There was a corn invasion of Nagrond and the end times. That's what I think they're using as a base uh, for Valka being there. So maybe Arbol could start close enough to it. Maybe he could start over here in the northern wastes, as opposed to this minor corn faction. Fighting Slanish, that would pr probably be very fitting for Corn. Or they could put Arbol in the middle of the Badlands where Scarbrand is and put Scarbrand over there in the north. Because that's already what Scarbrand's objective is, by the way. You want to go there, use the teleportation for cults, you go there, you beat up Nakari. Or not, because you can always rely on the elves beating up Nakari for the most part, though it's not guaranteed, kind of important point. Still, in most campaigns, the vast majority of campaigns that I've played on Legendary Difficulty, Nakari gets wiped out. In fact, I think on most difficulties, N Nakari gets wiped out by the High Elves in Wolf 1. Very rarely have I seen Nakari survive. Even if the High Elves are not necessarily doing so well, the combination of Elfarian and Alarial, maybe Bretonia, it just ends up being too much for Nakari to deal with. But we have no idea where our ball is going to start. We do have a notion of where Skulltaker is going to start. The trailer showed them in this particular area. But he might be in a bit of a different location. And we don't know how it's going to be with his campaign movement range. As it currently is, Scarbrand can move around the map very quickly. So five turns for most factions, you know, you'd assume they start close enough. But five turns for Scarbrand, you can conquer half the fucking map. Exaggerated... But 
not by much, suffice to say. There is a minor faction of corn over here in this particular area, but my skepticism in regards to Skull Taker's position, it, clearly it's going to be in this area. Now, from a military perspective, there's a meme on Reddit from people saying, oh, Skull Taker is just going to be beaten up by the Lizardmen, to which I'm laughing my ass off because do you know what corn can recruit at the moment? And I don't expect this to necessarily change, but because. Horn at the moment can recruit Bloodletters and Warriors of Chaos at tier 1. Bloodletters obliterate every other unit that the Lizardmen can have, even tier 3 units. This is a unit you can get at tier 1. Sure, it's ex as expensive as a, as a tier 3 unit because it is a tier 3 unit. Same with Chaos Blood. Warriors of Corn. But if we can still recruit those, or even if we are forced to recruit Marauders before being able to get Blood Letters and Warriors of Chaos, yeah. The only thing that might slow down Skulltaker and certainly not stop him is, um, would potentially be Lord Croak. But, fun fact, Lizardmen don't start, AI Lizardmen don't start with that. So if you're playing Gorok, yeah, you can deal with Skulltaker. If you're not playing Gorok, it's free experience. Like, literally, there is no faction over here. In this entire area of Southern Illustria, regardless of which province or settlement Skulltaker st uh, starts in, which could be a problem. Now, they might make it so that Skulltaker starts here, at four with the same faction that Skrulk starts in. That could make it easier for Skrulk to deal with the uh, early, uh, early game situation that he has, because Skrulk has a pretty hard early game battle with Tenowin. But if you don't have to deal with that, if you just have to deal with Sentinels of Time because you know Skulltaker is going to tackle everything else, then that's not really a problem. And in five turns, like let's say he starts over here or close enough, I imagine, you know, he, you could certainly get there. Or, potentially, he could replace this minor corn faction, which would make sense since the trailer shows him fighting Albrecht, you know killing Albrecht. And yes, Korn absolutely obliterates Bretonia in terms of early game armies. E even ignoring Chaos Warriors and Bloilers, like Marauders of Korn obliterate anything Bretonia can recruit early on. Even though Alberk does have the ability of recruiting Knights Errant from the very beginning of his campaign, it won't fucking matter. Like, let's just put it like that. Poor Alberk, he's become a meme. But that's the situation with Warzak, that's the situation with Arbol, that's the situation with um, Skulltaker. Let's talk about Ogres, let's talk about Gorbat uh, as well. Now for Gorbat, the natural assumption quite a few people could make is that what he's going to do is he's going to start over here in Ekron. So they move Warsag, Gorbat starts here, that makes sense. Kind of. It wouldn't be a far stretch, right? It would be sensical. Now, some would say, well, the trailer shows him in Averheim. But that's more of a long-term goal, or should be a long-term goal. Well, I'm going to say it outright. If they put another Greenskin campaign where much of it we're dealing with unpleasant climate, screw that. I'm just going to say it. It's bad enough for Skulltaker to deal with fucking Lustria, even with the movement range that he may or may not have as a corn faction. But if you're having to deal with that as Greenskins, it's not going to be a great situation. Like, I'm concerned about that with Skulltaker, by the way, the jungle situation with Skulltaker. I think it has the potential of ruining his campaign. But already with Grom, very powerful Legendary Lord, but his campaign just doesn't work as well in the long term because of where he starts. Climate situation. So I suspect he'll be in the Badlands, because lore-wise, that's what Gorbad did. He started in the Badlands, he conquered it, beat the crap out of the dwarves, forced the dwarves to seal their holds, and then invade the Empire where he literally got defeated at Altdorf. Just worth pointing that out. But they could just as easily, and it would be very sensical for them to do so, put him in Iron Rock. Because Gorbad is known for Iron Rock, his association with Iron Rock. In the lore, Iron Rock isn't just a minor fucking settlement. Iron Rock is the Grinskin uh, fortress in the Badlands, alongside Black Crag. I would even dare argue that for much of its existence, Iron Rock was actually more substantial than Black Crag. Until Gorfang Ra Ratgut, who, by the way, is supposed to control the Black Crag, but whatever. Regardless of that, 
we now have clan Verms in this location, but I think it would make a great deal of sense if he either started with Iron Rock and had to conquer this entire province or started with Black Crag. Starting with a minor settlement, that's not really a problem for Greenskins at all. Grimgor starts with a minor settlement. And typically when a faction starts with a minor settlement, it's usually a higher tier. So if you're starting with a provincial capital, typically you might get to that tier one with a minor settlement tier two. There are exceptions to be sure, but that's generally the rule. Alberic is by the way, the one exception. If I'm not mistaken, he starts with tier three. Regardless of which settlement he starts with, basically it would make a huge amount of sense for Gorbat to start here. And you would just have this minor greenskin faction controlling this area, you'd still have the Savage Orcs, and you would get the Green Tide. Basically, you know how Grimgor was an absolute fucking nightmare? Well, greenskins are back, baby. And they're gonna pump the brakes on the dwarves, because the dwarves, ever since from the K, I've got them pretty damn scary on the campaign map. I mean, honestly, under AI control, they all, always were pretty fucking scary. They were just crap to play. Now they're even scarier. It's just kind of worth pointing out. In this position, you have a lot of greenskins you can confederate. You have a lot of territory to take. You have a bunch of minor factions. And assuming Skarsnek stays where he is, maybe they could change his starting position somewhat. Regardless, assuming Skarsnik stays where he is, you have the potential of getting a Legendary Lord. Even if it's Skarsnik, hopefully with this DLC they do some kind of update to Skarsnik's skill line. Like, literally, his skill line is freaking pathetic. Like, it's genu genuinely the worst Legendary Lord skill line in the entire game. Not asking for a major faction effect change, though I think Skarsnik's campaign does need an update. So does Belagar, by the way. But just something worth pointing out. Still... With, uh, with regards to Gorbad, start over here in Iron Rock or Black Crag. Deal with this entire area. Unify the Greenskin Badlands. Maybe take Caracade Peaks as well at the same time if you want to or not. With the end goal of going into the Empire. It would be a much better situation than what Grom has to deal with. Where, yeah, he starts with one settlement that has good climate. But every settlement surrounding that is unpleasant climate. Which is not a great fucking situation to be dealing with. We could also talk about what they could do for Grom. But they've only talked about Warzak so far. Maybe this they surprised us. Because certainly it was a surprise to see the major updates for both Gelt and Karl Franz in Thrones of the King. But we'll see on that particular subject. But a pretty straightforward campaign, pretty straightforward situation. I think it's the most sensical option. And people have noted that while Skulltaker started on, they showed Skulltaker on like turn five, they showed both Gor uh, uh, Gorbad and Maneater much later on in their campaigns uh, in in the trailer when they showed off them when they showed them off on the campaign map. And that brings me to ogres. Could genuinely put Maneater in Scrag's current starting location because it won't make sense given the border princes, given the situation with the dogs of war, given the fact that Maneater is one of the most well known or the most well known ogre mercenary in the world. But what I suspect they'll do is they'll put him somewhere in the Empire. Now, where exactly? Hard to say. But why do I say in the middle of the Empire? Well, one of the things the developers talked about is a scenario where Maneater gets a contract from Carl Franz to fight Vlad. And then potentially turning around once that contract is completed in fighting for Vlad against Carl Franz. How exactly that will play out in terms of diplomacy, hard to say. But certainly, there are a lot of opportunities and a whole lot of different choices that you can make in the middle of the Empire. Draika, Vlad, Festus, uh, Elspeth, Carl, various choices to make. Some people have suggested they, they could put him in the middle of the Black Pit. Could possibly work, though I certainly am skeptical of the notion that he'll start in Norska. You might be able to get the contract to go over there in Norska, but starting in Norska... I'm highly skeptical of that particular claim. 
So instead, it's far more likely from my perspective that they'll put him, I know, somewhere in Talbayim, Sterling potentially. <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't know. It's hard to say. The moot, maybe, you know. Ogres, um, let's just say they like halfling food. They quite literally like halflings. Regardless, there are a whole bunch of choices over here. I suspect it won't be too close to another legendary lord, but it will be somewhere over here. Talabayam makes a lot of sense from quite a few perspectives, so they could just replace this per this minor ogre faction. And instead of starting with Salmond, you'd start with an ogre camp as a mercenary and have a lot of possibilities from the very beginning. Like, I know, taking a contract to fight Draka early on from Ostermark. <laughs> Which, I'll be blunt, that is fucking suicidal, to say the least. I don't care how powerful Maneater is gonna be. Fighting Draka early game is an absolute freaking nightmare for a lot of reasons, but it might be a direction that the developers do choose over there with Maneater. But given what they've talked about, given his lore as a character, it would make a lot of sense if they did so. If somewhere right in the middle of the Empire, maybe even the central lo location, which is in Talibayim, they put Maneater, and you can choose who you're going to fight for and who you're going to fight against. Because there are a lot of choices, and I think that's probably what's going to define Maneater's campaign. Those kind of choices, that kind of dynamic aspect of his campaign is what's really going to work. And it does work very well as a starting position. Would be very surprised if they did put him in the middle of Northcott because there's far fewer opportunities and it would screw over Wolfric. I mean, don't get me wrong. Someone's going to get screwed over because of these starting positions. There's going to be winners and losers. But I think it makes far more sense in Empire than Northcott. That's all I had to say. Christine signing out and stay tuned for more.